So today we're going to be cracking open Walkie's new H7, and I am stoked, man. I actually got mine in this lovely black color. Uh, I'm hoping anyway. <laughs> it's called matte black. So we got a uh, 48 volt. Um, it's, I believe it's a 40 amp hour. I can't be sure. Um, I don't believe you can put a second battery into this bike. And uh, we're just going to have to find out. Let's crack this thing open and find out. So uh, I did prep a little bit by taking out all these staples. So when you get your bike, if you want to keep your box intact, I recommend getting a little bent nose, needle nose pliers and just pulling all those out. And then that top layer is still going to be glued. So we're going to have to whittle away at that here. <laughs> this isn't going too bad. So a lot of folks will actually cut away at this box, but just in case we have an issue or there was a little bit of damage in shipping, try to keep this box intact. Not that I'll be sending it back. I'll just fix it. And you see here, I have the original step through H6. I absolutely love that bike. It actually has a much softer suspension, the, the original H6 uh, and the Max. Um, you don't have to swing your leg over it. You know, you can just step on, hit the throttle and go. It's really cool. That one's 35 amp hour. So with this one, I'm assuming that we have a max style battery, which is going to be the 40 amp hour. Let's see. Oh yeah. So I think the, um, I believe the, uh, footprint for the 40 amp hour and the 60 amp hour are the same. Uh, the 60 amp hour is just taller. So I think you can do that. And there she blows. All right. So there's going to be a little bit of extra assembly involved since we have a motor on our front hub. I believe that there is a, uh, a washer set that's going to act as uh, basically torque arms. They're not really torque arms. It's like a, a keyed washer set, I believe. I watched the walkies video, so I could be wrong about that, but I believe that's how it works. Let's get our nips. And we do have the CST tires. Um, I am actually a big fan of the Kendas that Walkie used to put on these bikes. Uh, these particular tires are great on the street. Uh, I've been riding them on that H6 Max, uh, but can't really put studs in these. Um, and they are on the thin side. You're gonna wear through them pretty quick. So if you do get one of these bikes with the CST tires, I don't care what make or model, um, you're probably going to go ahead and budget for an upgraded set of tires um, within about a year or so. I can already see a bunch of wear on that one, but I also kind of rag it out. I like to kind of do burnouts. And stuff. So I'm already seeing a little bit of wear on the rear tire, but they are sexy and they have this cool tread along the side. And with this hub motor, it is heavy. Um, this bike not having that down tube battery might be kind of a saving grace because I believe all told this bike is going to be 108 pounds. And right here, I'm assuming these are going to be those torque washers. Yep. So you're going to bust those out and this is what you're going to get. They're kind of little u-shaped there are two pieces with allen bolts on both sides i believe the front motor is 750 watt and um there's a lot of controversy when it comes to the wattage on these motors okay so these companies outsource the motors the brakes the controllers the um, dual battery equalizers which obviously this bike doesn't have um, and they build a bike out of all these components so these motors, like it, it might be stamped, blah, 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 500. And you're like, well, that's a 500 watt motor. Well, they're actually variable. And there are um, hard numbers that they put on these things. It's like 250, 500, 750. But it's a lot more analog than that. And it really depends on what the controller's doing and things like that. My original 86 is only a 750 watt hub motor. And when it's full of juice and I first crank it PS5, it's putting out 1556 watts. 
So that's all very analog. There is no hard, fast gig to it, but they do advertise this as a 750 watt front and a thousand watt rear. I would expect at the rate that Walkie is making all these bigger, better bikes, dual motors are making everything dual motor. They're making everything higher amp hour. Um, I'm going to assume that hopefully in the near future, we'll start seeing um, higher voltage out of those battery packs, you know, start seeing um, 60s, 72s and things like that. That's just kind of the wave of the future. But the reason that a lot of these companies have to hold back a bit on that especially like Walkie's trying to break into the European market is the litigation. Um, they can't sell people bikes that they can't legally ride, right? <laughs> you know? So there's a, there's a fine line being walked. Now here in the States, of course, and uh, especially where I live here in Idaho, it's just, I could put a flamethrower on the front of that bike and if a cop pulled me over, he'd be like, wow, that's wicked, you know? <laughs> he'd probably think I'm doing weed control. So, but, you know, if you're, say, in like a California or an Oregon, or I'm hearing that there's some uh, heavy litigation coming down in like New Jersey, where they're talking about actually um, using the serial numbers on these bikes as VINs and registering them, Um you know, that the more people ride these things, the more we interact with traffic, the more we interact with police, the more we interact with uh, the general public, the more some busybody is going to come out and, and write a bill. And, you know, all of a sudden we're going to have to start getting insurance and <laughs> stuff like that. And like maybe little plates here in Idaho, I would expect uh it would it wouldn't go that far it would be more like a uh an off highway sticker here we have off highway stickers that i put on my uh trail bikes and that allows you to ride pretty much on any public road that is uh 45 miles or less i believe so i would think that that is the way to go until you're riding a bike that does 75 miles an hour you know i i reckon it to a 4 by 4 truck okay um, I'm not going to go faster when I drop my truck into four high. Uh, I'm going to have better torque. I'm going to have better traction. And I'm also going to suck more gas. So with a bike like this, I would expect you wouldn't actually run both motors very much unless you're off-road, unless you're doing crazy hills. So they do offer this bike in a, a single uh, motor. So if you're just commuting flat ground, say you're in the middle of Houston, Texas, it's like a parking lot. There's really no need for two motors, but it's trick. You know? <laughs> it's cool. So here's the seat, typical walkie seat that they've been putting on these bikes forever. Um, it's got these uh, grommets that kind of flex side to side. It's, this particular seat post does not flip up. So I'm wondering about that, but usually with these rear battery bikes, we get a little hinge mechanism in the seat post. This one does not have that. It does have a handy ruler on the seat stem. So that's kind of nice because the other ones don't. And uh, if we swap out riders or I swap out seats, I've actually got to sit on it, test it, lift it, lift it, lift it. This one, I can actually mark it. Pretty typical, good quality foam um, in really cold weather. This is going to get kind of rigid on you but it's easy to swap with an upgraded Springer saddle like I have on my OG H6 back there. I really like that one. So there's your seat. Look at what we have here. That's a side plate. And since this is solid, I'm assuming our controller is sitting right in there. So if you'd like to see that, if you all want to start doing surgery on this bike, stick around, let's do it. Let's build it and then let's, let's get in there. I'm totally game. It's Sunday, man. All right, so here we have our rear seat. I look at this like a finishing piece as opposed to actually like a seat you would want to put somebody on. It does sit kind of low. There are a lot of moving parts down here. Uh, you could buy like some aftermarket foot pegs. Um, I wouldn't recommend they actually like use the um, axles as a foot peg. And I definitely wouldn't use the swing arm as a foot peg. And this isn't a traditional swing arm. You know, it's not round stock. 
and you've got a lot of cableage here. Um, so getting foot pegs on there might be kind of tricky. You could probably screw one into the end of the axle and have their foot out. But um, my boys are old enough now to where they want to be on their own mics. They don't want to be right behind my butt. <laughs> Absolutely not. I never pulled this bike. Um, and because of the way the weight is distributed, it's actually a lot more manageable to pick up and like throw in the back of my truck. Um, and the handlebars don't fold down anyway. I never fold these bikes. They all just kind of live in here. Um, every now and then I'll fold one up to get it into the back of my truck, but I've also got an ATV trailer with wheel chocks for motorcycles. And I treat them like a motorcycle. I throw them up on the ATV trailer. Um, yeah, I, I've only unfolded or folded this bike in order to get to the controller and the guts of the thing to check it out. So, and plus you've got this, I don't know if you guys can see that I'm on the way, you've got this mechanism in order to unfold it, which is right in the way of your crank. So that limits how large a chain ring you can put on there. It's right in the way. That's why I've got a, I wanna say, 58 tooth on that. I would have liked to gone 60, but you can't because of that handle. And the wiring harness runs through the frame as opposed to under the belly of the bike. So when they wire these bikes up, they string it all pretty tight. So the first time you go to fold it, those cables inside of there are like, you know, tight tendons. They don't want to let it fold. So I got in there and I loosened it up and everything to where I can fold it. But this is epic. I'm going to guess it's 52 because that's kind of uh, how they usually go. Um, handlebar configurations, we got our uh, DY Island brake levers that are adjustable, love that. Twist throttle, real responsive with the horn. Um, all basically the same as the Max, except these trick handlebars, look at that. Oh man, about time. They look like something that would be on a triple tree fork. You know what I'm saying? But I personally don't like triple tree forks because you can't turn it all the way. Oh, here's the keys right here. Okay, so this is locked in here. And there's our battery. So that's going to make it a lot easier for me to pick up. Um, whoa, wait. This is different. No, it actually plugs in on the side. That's cool. Um, what I what concerns me about the max batteries is with the inputs on the bottom. If you take it out, if you set it down, if you get it dirty, um, or if you're riding, say, in snow like we've been doing, um, and water accumulates under there, I don't think it really can, but it's it's a possibility. So when I first lifted up, I was like, oh, it's kind of sketch. But this is right there on the side. So I dig that. I've ridden in all kinds of weather. I've ridden in rain and snow and things like that. I wouldn't do it in like a torrential downpour. I wouldn't like spray my bike with a hose, but all the connections and everything are generally waterproof, you know? Um, and I actually take this thing fishing. I take that one fishing. I've taken that one fishing. Um, and I do shallow water crossings. And of course that sprays everything. I have not had any kind of issue with weather. In cold, my original, the buttons would uh, stick a little bit, but after you got them fired up, they'd be fine. But uh, yeah, I, I'm not gonna call it waterproof. They are incredibly water resistant. Be cautious, but I, I wouldn't have anxiety about it. My experience, no worries. Yeah, that's a bummer. So this is its own animal. So I was kind of hoping that I would, uh, this would be sort of the same basket and same configuration. And then all of a sudden, hey, I've got two batteries for this bike. You know, I could throw an extra one in the truck. At the same time, I have yet to get one of these bikes below 40% unless I did it on purpose trying to film it. Um, of course, you, you can get it low, but you turn the bike off and let the battery kind of recuperate, let the controller cool down, you turn the bike back on and it's rebounded quite a bit. So after that rebound, I've never seen one of these bikes. I think 47% is the lowest I've had that one. And that was two days worth of commuting the long way through farm roads and the wind and snow. 
So um, I wouldn't have battery anxiety anyway. But yeah, it would be kind of trick to be able to swap these out. But this is a better design. And it, it would be really cool if we saw like, say, the uh, X3 Pro, Pro battery was able to slide into this tube and things like that. It would be cool if more stuff was interchangeable. But they're constantly reevaluating things and constantly making moves. So, you know, that would cause them to be stagnant because this bike would have to have things that they thought better of two years ago. So, you know, good and bad. It's trick, but it, it'd be kind of cool to be able to throw that in here. And yes, this is the same crank set as our uh, other bikes. It is 52 tooth. And um, again, we've got kind of a good and bad thing going on here. Can you all see this? Um, it's a one piece crank so that means you're not going to be able to swap out this chain ring like we can with the older models and that's a bummer for me because i love tweaking with my gearing it's you know and, and really getting some pedal you're helping your battery and you're getting more exercise and it just uh, it feels more like a, a traditional bike um but at the same time they did this because with this model of crank set and chain ring you have a dual guard on both sides. Whenever you're riding and hitting a bump, um, when I've swapped to, you can't see it now, but uh, on my original H6, I swapped to a 62 chain ring. It has no guard. And that derailleur will give you some slop and your chain will jump. They come with 14, 28 free wheels, I believe. Getting this to like an 1134 would be trick. And I think that would be just as good as swapping out the chain ring. Actually, it's a lot more efficient. Just a little bit more difficult. All right, so this is our box of accoutrements. We're getting a 17-19mil uh, a box in. And this is probably a 15, yep, it's 15-13 box in. All right, so this is our headlight. Same headlight we've gotten with the Max and the X3 Pros. Uh, I really like it. It does have this sort of grill on there. That's trick. It looks really cool. And it's going to kind of protect your bike. When you're riding at first, you're going to see that grill kind of projected down the road. And at, it's, it, at first it was kind of lame. I was like, hey, I think I'll actually like trim that off. I think a few guys in our group have done that. But honestly, it does project really well and you sort of get used to it. So and I have ridden that uh, quite a bit in the dark. It, in the winter, it gets dark here at 5.30. And you just kind of get used to it. It just doesn't bother you anymore. At first, it's kind of off-putting. but So I wouldn't really worry about that. But if you wanted to, you could actually cut that, cut that, take a Dremel, and cut these four bits, and that'll come right off. But uh, I kind of I, I like, I like that, especially when you're transporting. Just have a little extra something on there, you know. Looks kind of sci-fi. And Allen wrenches, uh, they've been giving us ball head Allen wrenches with these bikes, which are um, really necessary for certain spots, especially on the handlebars, because like you say, you'll, you'll want to get to one bit and the brake levers in the way. So having a ball head and being able to come out at an angle is really nice. Um, plus they're just, you know, always easier. And the typical folding pedals. No, I have not. I have had no need to. Um, there is a screw at the top, and that kind of acts like your master cylinder. It's a little screw. And once you pop that off, you're going to fill that with mineral oil. They actually sell like injection kits and stuff. I, I don't really see a need for that. If you just get something like one of those little baby syringe or pet syringe, fill it with mineral oil and uh, just push it in there. And if air bubbles come out, then you needed to bleed your brakes. And you're not going to see like any kind of dramatic air bubbles come out of this system. But all it takes is a little bit of air busted up in there to make them squishy. So I haven't done that yet. Another good video idea. But again, I, I just kind of live with these bikes and I, I do my tweaks and things just for fun, but I haven't had to do any real maintenance like that and again i'm kind of one day i'll ride that one day i'll ride that one day i'll ride that so i'm not um you know putting as many miles on one particular bike at a time so i might be a little bit skewed in that sense but again that's another good video idea 
uh, what was the second question? The headlight. The original H6 and step through and uh, my original X3, I got those when they first came off the line. And that little projector headlight leaves a lot to be desired. Um, if you focus it correctly, it's okay. But I actually, I added lights. I did a whole video on adding another uh, really hot light to those bikes. That that light leaves a lot to be desired. I love the horn though. The horn's really loud. So um, yes, this is a lot better. Big, huge improvement. The horn has a slightly higher pitch. It's not as aggressive. It's more of an eh, and sort of a eh. Um, but it functions great. So that's another thing. If you guys are, uh, like, uh, riding, um, around normies and on bike paths and things like that with joggers, I would get a little ding, ding bell, because if you blast this horn at them, you, you know, it'll come off as rude, no matter what, even if you're trying to be nice and be like, uh, -uh it's still going to come off rude. It's loud, which I love because I commute on these bikes. Definitely join the walkie e-bike owners group uh on in facebook and definitely enlighten us guys we really appreciate it i am not an expert on these bikes by any means i do not work for walkie i'm just like y'all i'm just a fan of these bikes i just happen to be willing enough to make an ass of myself on camera and they think it's hilarious so they keep sending me bikes so i can do it <laughs> so this is our charger this is the new charger, same one that comes with the Max. I'm going to say that this is a 5 amp, 5 amp, really beefy unit, extremely good unit. Um, the fan um, isn't super loud. It's functional. That way you know it's charging, you know it works. Green LED. Um, it's red while it's charging, turns green for you when you're fully charged. And uh, definitely let the charger go green, okay, because your bike is going to read 100% but there's still some top off capacity, especially after you've uh, run several cycles. So leave that on till it's green. I've had, I've got no anxiety about leaving these chargers on. I get home from work, I let the bike cool off, I plug them in and I go about my business. I come out the next morning, they're green. I have no anxiety about these chargers, about the batteries, they're UL certified Samsung. So that's a really good unit and uh, definitely worth noting. And here we have our H7 all-wheel drive user's manual. And it has uh, all the functionality of the display and how to put it together. Okay, so here's the neck. I want to get this uh, handlebar on here. Here's the neck piece. It had a piece of plywood or uh, cardboard around it. It does have a little cap for that Allen, so pay attention to that. Don't lose that. And so let's bust out our Allen wrenches and get that off of there and happening. So you have, this is basically a decorative cap right here. And I'm going to bet that is a five. Okay, so I've got the uh, little saucer washer. And that is basically kind of a decorative cap. It's a five mil Allen you're going to pull out of there. Keep that in that box so I don't lose it. And our handlebars, glory be. And you're just going to drop right down on there. Maybe I will have to loosen them a little bit. So we're going to go with the six, I believe. And just kind of loosen up that neck a little bit so I can slide her down on there. This is a beefy clamp. This clamp is just two Allens, two six mils on both sides. That is perfect. And I'm seeing that the forks are different. This lockout trigger here is much more robust. And it actually has a lock and minus and plus arrows. So you actually know what you're doing. And I am going to stick our cap back on here. In our seat. Let's see if this is going to be a problem. You might have to actually pull the seat out in order to get your battery out. So let's say I'm riding right there, right below six foot. 
You want to unplug here. Bam. Yeah. So you do actually, you want to pull that battery out. You're going to want to pull your seat out. So that is why they didn't give us a textured gripped seat. And that's why we have a measurement here because you're going to be pulling this out if you want to pull this battery out. Me personally, I never have to pull the batteries out of my bikes unless I feel like it's going to get crazy cold in here uh, during the winter. So they just kind of live in there. But, um, you know, if you are leaving it outside or you're scared about theft, you want to pull your seat off, pull that off. And, of course, they put a uh, fork stabilizer bar into this bike. So I need to get that out of the way. And I'm guessing that that's what that 13 is for. Oh, it just popped out up there for me, no problem. And there is a spacer in that front brake caliper. Very nice. Very cool. So I don't have to worry about accidentally squishing those brakes. That's a really nice touch. Do the forks have more travel? Okay, I answer that. Definitely, definitely has more travel. Okay, so I've got the battery out. So let's just go ahead and flip it upside down. We're on cardboard. We shouldn't do any, any damage. And this might be loose, so it can kind of come out of the way for us. Okay, I'm going to flip this bike up. Watch out, buddy. Step to this way. Boom. Oh. How about that? Bam. Hot dog. Okay. <laughs> and... If you guys can see, maybe um, I've got that wire actually heading towards the handlebars like they're supposed to. Yay! I'm going to Hawaii! Yay! <laughs> and then that guy is going to go in there. Um, as for now, I'm just going to kind of get these acorn nuts on here so we can keep playing. Because I want to just keep playing. I want to dig into that controller box. There it is. Um, and you can see all that raw aluminum in here. Uh, I do believe they went with a slightly thicker aluminum stock on this, uh, if I read that correctly. Okay, so I can't pull this out of here because the uh, cable that is, I'm pretty sure it's the one that is running up through the frame to our handlebar harness is actually in there really tight. So in order to get this out, I'm gonna have to unplug and do some fishing. Uh, this looks about like the 40 amp controller that came with the Max. Gotcha. So uh, I'm just really paying attention to how I'm plugging in this Gillette. Uh, it's a uh, one, two, three, uh, three large pin and six small pin Gillette that goes to this motor. I'm just really paying attention because there is small arrows imprinted on here and you really want to make sure you line that up because there's a lot going on here. And I believe I've got it. So there we go. And I uh, usually when I do these builds, I don't really mess with uh, the vendors and headlights and all that stuff. Y'all know how to do that. Here we go. This is how I usually do a bike. So I usually do, but this is a heavy, heavy beast. It's coming down. Boom. All righty. Nice. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's stick the battery in it, and then I will try to lift it off the ground. I just want to see that front motor. Zap, zap, zap. 70% of the battery, so it's not going to give us our full wattage. So how do we turn on that front? Oh my goodness, I just did it. <laughs> um, it did not give me a mile per hour on the front hub. Obviously, now this is okay. I don't want to mess with that, <laughs> but now this is a all wheel drive. We have both our icons on the little biker dude are lit up. So, this is an all wheel drive bike, freaking wicked. Uh, then we have our cable here that's going to go to the headlight. 
headlight is no big whoop. You, you remove that bolt here and slide it through your fender and the headlight bracket, plug it in, press the headlight icon, and you're good to go. Um, it, it does have rear brake lights, which obviously work. So if y'all can see the rear brake lights, anybody that knows these bikes know that that's a deal. Um, man, I'm loving these handlebars. These are great. Are those shocks a test? I'm kind of bumming that I wasn't be able to get into that controller and really see what's going on there. I'm just going to have to ask them because I don't want to totally pull this thing apart while I'm in bike test mode. And let us pull the brake. Now, if y'all can see back there, I can't see, but I'm 175 pounds. If you can see any rebound back there, I am feeling it a little bit. Uh, when these wheels come, they're not fully inflated to uh, riding PSI. You know, they just kind of get them full so that they'll uh, be easy to inflate and the tires don't come off the rim. Uh, with stock tubes, no tennis armor, I'm usually in that... 20, 25 PSI range on the road. Once I have my tennis armor in there and I have three inch tubes, I'm in that 17 PSI range. The H6 Max, when I first got it, it was doing like 30 and 32. And I was like, oh, okay. But now I've got about 200 miles on it. And uh, even in this cold weather, it's doing 34 and that's GPS, not uh, not just the display. Um. Yeah, uh, yeah, they're saying 33 to 32 miles an hour. I really doubt y'all can see any of that stuff. And this does have the uh, Find My Bike app. If you have iOS, if you have Android, I guess you can get one of those aftermarket Air Tags and throw it in there somewhere. Uh, there's plenty of little places, obviously, down in that situation where you can drop an air tag and there is uh this is basically the same display as the hx max except it has a little bit more accoutrements for the dual motor and it does have a USB-C port right there so uh you can charge your goodies that's it that's that's out of the box don't forget to smash that like button on your way out i have to get back to work have a great rest of your day thank you for the videos thanks a lot matt i really appreciate you in my regular long form content i have an editor and so all this airheadedness gets cut out of there y'all getting to see me raw Okay, so um, yeah, man, uh, we've gone for a while. If there's no more questions, uh, I did have kind of a slideshow presentation, but this is basically just the Walkie website. And uh, there's a cool video here. What's that do when you press that video? Uh, oh, who's that guy? <laughs> Shit, brings you to one of my videos. So that's kind of fun. Uh, <laughs> hey, hi, me. <laughs> So I really appreciate you guys watching. Yeah, slug that bug. If uh, if you haven't subscribed already, uh, which of these bikes is your son's? They're all my sons and they're all my wives. Um, they just let me ride them every now and then. <laughs> uh, Loctite, there are a few spots on these bikes, that battery rail in there, because you know it's it's kind of holding this heavy item in place. Um, it can put a little bit of tension on there. So that battery rail is actually uh, locked in with Phillips. I would definitely lock tight those. Definitely the kickstand because that's going up, down, up, down. And it's kind of a lever that vibrates. So I definitely lock tight the kickstand. And there's also a bolt back here that goes into a slide. And that's so you're able to adjust the kickstand. And... I don't know if you haven't done this yet. Um, it's not if, it's when, but you will hop on one of these bikes and take off without putting up the kickstand. I do it all the time. Uh, or I smack them in the curbs. So there, that, that little bolt back there on that slide, I would go ahead and lock tight that too to keep that nice and locked in there because that'll vibrate, loosen up, your kickstand kind of comes up and your bike has a pretty heavy lean. Or you go pick it up and it kind of comes out kind of far and you could lose or break that piece. I've broken one of those smacking in the curb and, and I would keep hopping on it and taking off without kicking that up or thought I did and I didn't, but I was uh, 
in too big a hurry. Uh, there is actually already Loctite on this clamp. There's uh, the blue stuff. That's a good idea. I've never had to really do any Loctite on anything on the bars. A lot of that you're going into uh, uh, you know, a, a tension clamp. So that tension is going to keep the screw in there. Um, I haven't had any issues with any of my... Uh, you're asking me a cool question because I never thought about this. I kind of like the simplicity of this, the fact that there's only one battery. Um, I'm not plugging in two chargers. All three of those bikes, uh, after the bike cools down, I'm, I'm plugging one in here, plugging one in here, and running two cords. So when it, you know, it all is kind of charged at the same time. This is just one. That is cool. And th that battery is nothing to sneeze at. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about range. So I'm stoked to ride it. I think I'm going to be right on home. Uh, these folding pedals, uh, not my cup of tea because they're on the petite side. And I like to stand up and ride and have a nice perch. So I do swap out to the big ride race face pedals. Oh, we have more questions. Looking forward to more uh, info on the display. Thanks for the videos. So uh, yeah, I'll definitely be doing that. I will be going through the displays for y'all and uh, doing a much better job. I'm not super technical. And normally I don't mess with the displays on these bikes. A lot of the stuff that um, is either negligible to mess with to begin with, or just doesn't really make a big difference. Pretty much the way it comes out of the box, I'm usually perfectly happy with it. I get all the speed I need. I, I peek it out. So, you know, all I do is throw it on PS5 and I cruise. Uh, I don't have as big a conversations with walkie as I probably should, but I really try to be standoff. I'm one of you guys, you know, I don't work for them. I don't really consort with them very much. Um, when I, uh, find a problem with the bike, I shoot it on video and they learn about it through watching my videos. And, uh, so it's, it's all out there in the open. You know, I really want to be uh, set aside from that. <laughs> Okay, so that looks like everything. Man, I've been on here for a while. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Uh, I'll be cranking out more videos. Uh, my my big thing that I want to do, especially now that this bike is here, is get into the gearing on the H6 Max, which for all intents and purposes should be the same procedure as doing it on this H7 or your H9, 1,000 watt motor. Um, so I'll be working on that at the same time as getting footage with this. And I'm considering getting a 360 camera, one of those instant 360s. I kind of told myself if I got another bike, I'd go pull the trigger on that. Does that matter to y'all? Like when you see those videos and they're using the Insta 360 cameras, does that make it more trick? Do you prefer that? Let me know uh, in comments on any of my videos. Hey man, get a 360 and that'll that'll push me over the edge. I'll go get one. <laughs> uh, just flood the brakes. It's real easy. Enjoy the new bike. Cheers, man. Cool. Yeah, when I get around to that, it, it, it can't be that difficult. I mean, I build cars, you know, <laughs> so bleeding the brakes on one of these shouldn't be that big a deal. And like I said, I just, I just adjust them until they work and I haven't had any issues. So, um, seems like it's pretty easy. Cheer. It won't hurt. Uh, get the 360. I'm getting a 360. Thank you, Santa Claus. <laughs> Callie's been telling me, just get it. You're going to use it. It's it's for a hobby that you love. Just get it. She's cool like that. But I'm like, I don't know. I just bought a new laptop. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Thanks so much. See you next time.